Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. When I was a kid, I took piano lessons. And inevitably, family or friends or neighbors would come over and my parents would say to me, Mark, go play that person some piece on the piano. Entertain us. Show us what you can do. And, and I always hated it. I hated it with a passion. And I think I hated it because I felt at the core that I didn't have anything to offer. I didn't have any piece of music that was worth listening to. Later in life, just a decade later, when I was in my teenage years, I had made a decision I wanted to be a professional musician. And I studied very, with great diligence, and I practiced a lot. But I never could get my pieces to the level I felt comfortable with. I, I was a perfectionist, and I wanted them perfect. And I never got to that level that I felt I had something to offer in, in performance. So when those neighbors and family members and friends would come over and say, hey, play us something, I, I hated doing it. I shied away from it because I didn't feel I had anything to offer. I didn't think I had anything worth listening to. And I notice this pattern playing out in people's lives in so many facets that we feel we don't have anything to offer in, in the moment to the situation. You know, you know, someone is on the side of the road and we pass them by. And I think sometimes we're just surprised to see them there, but other times we keep driving because we feel we have nothing to offer them. I mean, you're not a mechanic, I'm not a mechanic. How are we supposed to fix their car? How are we supposed to help them? And so we just keep driving because at the core of it, we don't have anything to offer, at least to our own thinking. Or someone's in grief and they're going through a real heartache and, and the tears are coming down and, and we, we don't know what to say to them. We don't know what, you know what to do. And so we just stand away from them because we have nothing to offer them. At least that's what we think. Or we see someone in really hard circumstances and, and it, they seem to have insoluble problems and we don't have the magic answer for them. We don't have the pep talk or or the solution, so we just sort of stand back, kind of drive on, because we don't have anything to offer them. There's a story in the book of Kings of Elijah, the prophet. He's, he's in a struggle with King Ahab. He brings a, an oracle of judgment against Ahab, says, Ahab, until you change your ways, there's going to be no rain in the land. And a drought takes hold, and famine starts to manifest itself. And, and Elijah has to move to a new town called Zarephath. And he meets a widow right at the edge of the town by the, the town gate. She's picking up firewood. And he, he goes to the widow and says, can you get me a, a glass of water? And then, and then he says, can, oh, so can I have some bread, please? And she says to him, I, I don't have any bread. I, I have nothing. All I've got is a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil to make for our, my last meal with my son and me. And then we're going to starve to death. See, in, in the ancient world, widows of all were at the very bottom pecking order of the society. They had the least means, the least resources, the least contacts, the least networking of any group of people in, in society. There was a person who really had nothing to offer Elijah. And Elijah says to her, I want you to take that last bit of flour and oil. I want you to make some loaves of bread, small loaves of bread, and just give me a portion of it. And I make this promise to you. Trust God that you will not run out of flour or oil during the famine and drought that we're experiencing. And, and, and the widow did that. And each morning she found that there was flour and oil in the containers. They, they never ran out. And the analogy for us, of course, is that we find ourselves in situations where we feel we have nothing to offer, but the promise to us is that there is a power moving through our lives if we trust it the spirit, whatever you might want to call it. Life extends out through our hands to the world. And when we trust this power, good things will come even when we feel poor. Just a couple of days ago, I was, I was performing in a, in a group setting. I've been learning this new instrument called the bala. It's kind of like the piano, but it's got wood slatted keys. It's an it's a African instrument. And I was playing with my group, the Thunga Drummers. And, and all of a sudden, uh, I got soloed out in a sense. The leader of the group pointed to me to do a solo. I've only been studying this instrument for a few months. I don't really know what I'm doing even. I'm just starting to get the hang of it. And in that moment, I felt that voice coming over in my mind saying to me, Mark, you have nothing to offer here. I, I didn't pay attention to that voice because I realized that if I trust and I let love come through, no matter what I feel about the circumstance, nonetheless, something good will take place, and it did.